Today is the beginning of a one-year experiment. What I'm going to do is show how many kilowatt hours of electricity it takes to filter this pool and to keep it in good shape. Today is April 11th, 2015. You can see the Palo Verdes are in bloom. It's clearly springtime. Here's the pool. I built this pool. It was commissioned in July of 1986. It's 29 years old. It's still the original plaster. Two years ago, I uh, drained the pool and I repainted it because the plaster was in such good shape. Here's my automatic cover that was put in back when the pool was built. When I built the pool, I put in the sub panel right here. I bought from the APS meter shop a old uh, meter. Here it is. And then I have my sub panel to all my pool equipment right there. So last year I put in a photovoltaic system and <clears throat> they gave me this temporary meter. As you see, it's showing 68 kilowatt hours. And so what we're going to do is track this for the next year to see exactly how many kilowatt hours this pool uses. I realize I'm probably the only one in Arizona that ever put electric meter in to measure their pool equipment. Years ago, I measured it from year to year, and I don't have any of that data anymore. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, start this recording and we'll see how the experiment turns out. I'm going to go ahead and use my standard chlorine floater. I'm going to tuck it underneath the pool lip here a little bit. My trusty assistant, we'll call her Vanna, is going to close the pool cover. There's the trusty assistant's dog. <clears throat> pool cover has a little dirt and debris on it. That's fairly typical. Okay, the pool is now officially closed. The experiment starts. Okay, here's the second chapter in our one-year experiment. Today is November 5th, 2015. Here's the Arizona Republic, November 5th, 2015. The meter has 85 kilowatt hours on it. It used to have 68, so we've used 17 kilowatt hours. At an off-peak rate, that's about a dollar. So here's the pool. As you can tell, the shading is different. It's clearly winter. It's a nice sunny day. Yesterday we had rain. So you can see some of the remnants of that on the cover after I pump the water off the cover. I've only been vacuuming the pool. I just finished. It takes a little while because automatic covers do not seal as well as our manual power lock. So where that leading edge bar right there attaches to the wall, there's a gap. So during windstorms, you can get dirt and debris that come under there. It keeps a lot of it out, you know, 90-some, 90 95% or whatever percent you want to come up with. We've got a couple bugs floating on the pool at the moment. Uh, the pool was used a little bit during the summer. We had an ongoing guest that stayed with us, and she used the pool uh, quite a bit. Um, my wife and I did not use the pool at all this year. We're part of the 50% of people that do not use their pool. For quite a few years, we were part of the 70% that used it five times a year or less. 
it's just a situational issue with us. Um, we're not opposed to using the pool, but with all the things going on in our busy lives, we just ended up not doing it. So this experiment, to recap, we're seven months into the experiment. We've used 17 kilowatt hours for about a cost of a dollar. I'll go ahead and shut the pool. I'll probably pull it open again maybe in February or March. I won't use any electricity probably during that time. It only takes about one kilowatt hour of electricity for me to come out and uh, vacuum this pool. And that's really all I've been doing is vacuuming the pool. I've not been running it for hours and hours and hours just because it doesn't need it. So we will see you in February or March. So here we are about a year and a week later. Today is Sunday, April 17th, 2016. Ironically, it's one of the days that we're running our ad in the Arizona Republic. And last weekend was the one year anniversary, but it was rainy and it's been very, very windy. You can see the debris that gets into my cover because once again, the leading edge does not quite uh, seal all the way. So this debris has been in here for several months. I did not do a video in February because when I looked at the pool, it looked about the same. I didn't see a reason to um, spend the time talking about it. So now what I'm going to do is do a final cleanup of the pool and I'll be back with you shortly. So here's a little sub experiment. It's 1237 on the 17th. We've used 90 kilowatt hours during this entire experiment. What I'm going to do is show you in one hour how many kilowatt hours we've used because I know that most people don't think in kilowatt hours. They think in time. So we'll figure out how many hours of run time my pump has had during this last year. All right, so here we are an hour later. 138 April's and we're just hitting 92 kilowatt hours. So what that means is I'll grab my handy dandy sheet. Here we are April 17th, 22 kilowatt hours total for the whole project at about 2 kilowatt hours per hour of runtime. That's about 11 hours of runtime. So 11 hours of runtime is about what people would use in one day. It took us an entire year. So here's the pool after I vacuumed it. I didn't get every leaf out and happens to be a windy day so we're still getting some blossoms from the Palo Verde. They obviously bloomed a little earlier this year. It got warmer earlier. So when I first started this experiment, I ran the pool for several hours at a time, letting the creepy corally slash barracuda do its job. And then I realized that's inefficient. So then I backed off and I started just vacuuming the pool as necessary. <clears throat> so the first six or seven months, I used 17 kilowatt hours. The last six months, I only used five which means I probably could have done this experiment with 10 or 11 kilowatt hours. Uh, kilowatt hour off peak runs about six cents. So at 22 kilowatt hours, I basically filtered this pool for $1.32 for an entire year. I also started off using the floater for the chlorinator, but that became inconvenient to pull the cover back and have to take it all the way off before it would pop out from underneath the cover. So then I just started using some liquid chlorine. So I've got about six gallons of liquid chlorine and maybe a half a dozen tabs for this whole year. The principle was to have a pool that was basically swimmable at any point in time. I didn't heat the pool in the dead of winter. I'm simply talking about it by appearance and chemically.
I didn't do a chemical test during the entire year. I was just doing it by sight, which is what most people are doing anyway. So many times when our customers want to hibernate their pool and they tell their pool guy that they no longer need him, the pool guy will tell them that this is impossible, you can't do it. And sometimes the pool guy calls me and says, what are you telling these people this for? And I tell them, well, it can do it. I said, have you ever tried it? And they said, well, of course not. So you can hibernate a pool and shut it off for years at a time. That's the other video you see on our website. Or with this experiment, you can run it for 11 hours for an entire year at $1.32 and keep the pool in relatively good condition. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I did not shoot it professionally. It's on my camcorder. And uh, I thank you for your time in watching this. Goodbye.